Let's talk about Ireland. The Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Frances Fitzgerald, faces a no-confidence vote today over her handling of a whistleblower controversy, which could pull down the minority government and trigger a snap election. That vote could cause complications for Theresa May's chances of a breakthrough in Brexit talks in the coming days. Uh, May hopes, well, they hinge on convincing Northern Ireland's DUP party, which props up her government, to accept the UK position on the Irish border. Uh, let's get to Dublin. We have our Bureau Chief, Dara Doyle. He joins us now on the phone. Dara, good to talk to you. Past 24 hours, it sounds as if there's a little bit more news flow in regards to Francis Fitzgerald. What's the top line? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they say 24 hours is a long time in politics, and so it's proved. Um, this time yesterday, it looked like we were headed for a sort of fairly easy compromise that would avoid an election at about uh, 7 p.m. last night. The Justice Ministry released a series of emails that showed that the Justice Minister actually probably knew a lot more about the strategy to discredit this whistleblower than, than we had originally thought. That was ascribed as grenade in the talks to try and avoid an election, and right now she's under intense pressure to resign. Any talk of a compromise has gone away, so we've got about, I don't know, 12, 15 hours before this government might fall unless Frances Fitzgerald agrees to fall on her own sword. Yeah, indeed. And so that leads me on to the next question, which is about, uh, Dara, how will today unfold? I guess the big question is whether she does that or whether we get to this evening and there's been no movement and we get this vote. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we know is that the uh, Prime Minister, Leo Radker, will meet uh, the Leader of the Opposition again for a final time this morning to try and figure things out. We expect that meeting probably to happen sometime in the morning. Um, the Prime Minister is due in Parliament in the early afternoon around 2 o'clock um, and then we move on to this vote if it happens at about 8 o'clock. So that's the sequence of events today. I mean, it's probably 50-50 at this point. She seems under such intense pressure to resign that it looks in some ways almost inevitable. But yet, the noises we're hearing from senior government figures is they still defend her, they still stand by her. So really, we're in a game of chicken at this point. Um, nobody's exactly sure how it's going to end, but it could end very badly. As you said, Dara, we have 12 hours to run. Fitzgerald could step down. That could uh, help uh, Vardaker out. Of course, I watched his news, his news interview on Friday night on the national broadcaster, absolutely very within his defence of Fitzgerald, and making the point that he would still be Taoiseach and have a mandate for the Irish people in Brexit negotiations, even if he called the worst-case scenario, which is an election. Is that still the thinking? Would he really have the mandate to carry forward Ireland's view in those negotiations? Yeah, I mean, there's two schools of thought on this one. I mean, the most obvious one is that if he goes to that summit as uh, in the middle of an election campaign, um, he's going to be effectively a lame duck um, three or four days before an uh, election. Can he really take a mass decision on his future? So the chances of him giving any concessions are quite slim. Um, on the other hand, he does... I mean, Parliament is pretty united on the Brexit position, so theoretically... You know, it shouldn't change most of fact he's in an election situation, but the, probably, the reality probably is he's unlikely to take any massive decisions given he's in the middle of an election campaign. So it will have an impact. And that is actually a huge factor for Francis Fitzgerald and the pressure on her. People say, look, we're in possibly uh, the most important time for Ireland since the bailout. Surely one person should not um, uh, hurt Ireland's national interests as these talks kind of come to a head. So that, that is a factor weighing on Francis Fitzgerald, I'd imagine, this morning as she considers her position but as I say we yet she's saying she's not going anywhere at this point so let's see how that unfolds